Okay, when we simplify complex fractions, we need to simplify the numerator and simplify the denominator. So, to simplify my denominator here, my numerator is just an x. There's nothing else I can do there. I need to get a common denominator. I have an x and a y. So my common denominator is going to be the product of both of them, x times y. <clears throat> In my first fraction, I have the x. I'm missing the y. So I need to multiply by y to get my common denominator. Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator in order to keep it equivalent. In my second fraction, I have the y. I'm missing the x. So I need to multiply by the x, top and bottom, numerator and denominator, to keep it equivalent. Now that I've got my common denominator and my equivalent fractions, I can combine them into one fraction. I have y over xy plus x over xy. Uh, we also want to check any restrictions on our domain. So here we have x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. Those are restrictions on our domain so far. I can combine these in my denominator to simplify. Once I have a common denominator, I add my numerators. So I have y plus x. Now, I've simplified my denominator. My numerator is just an x. To get rid of division, which is what I have in a fraction, I switch to multiplication by the reciprocal of my denominator. Okay, so I take my x from my numerator times x, y goes to the top, x plus y goes to the denominator. Since I'm multiplying, I multiply straight across. And when I don't have a denominator, it's 1. So I have x times xy over y plus x, which means I get x squared y. I don't distribute there because I'm not adding. I just multiply it all together. x times x is x squared and a y over y plus x. Last thing we need to do is we introduced a new denominator, so we need to check that. y, sorry, uh, plus x cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal negative y and y cannot equal negative x. x and y can't be opposites. And there we go. Last example here. Again, I'm going to simplify my numerator. Then I'm going to simplify my denominator. And then I'm going to divide the two. So in my numerator, I need to get a common denominator. I have x and I have an x plus 1. So my common denominator is just going to be x times x plus 1. Now I compare. What am I missing? In my first fraction here, I have the x. I don't have the x plus 1. So I need to multiply by it to make them match. Whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the top. And I put the parentheses there because we're going to have to FOIL that numerator. In my second fraction, I have the x plus 1, but I don't have the x. So I need to multiply by x, top and bottom. I'm going to go ahead and keep simplifying this top fraction to start with. Uh, right now, I have x minus 2 times x plus 1. I'm going to FOIL that. I'm going to get x squared. Uh, plus x minus 2x minus 2. Then I'm going to add the 2x. And that goes over my common denominator of x times x plus 1. I'm going to keep simplifying here. I have x squared 
minus 2x plus 2x is 0, so plus x minus 2 over x times x plus 1. And this factors into x plus 2x minus 1 over x, x plus 1. Again, don't forget restrictions on your domain. So right now x cannot be 0 from right here, and x cannot equal negative 1 from right here. So that's what I have so far. Okay, now I've completely simplified my numerator. I'm going to simplify my denominator. Common denominator here, I have an x minus 1, x plus 1. So my common denominator are those two factors multiplied together. In my first fraction, I have the x minus 1. I'm missing the x plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both by that factor I'm missing, top and bottom, uh, numerator and denominator there to keep it equivalent so that I have the same denominator, the common denominator. Uh, and my second one here, I have the x plus 1. I'm missing the x minus 1. So I multiply by x minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and simplify here. My denominator is my common denominator, x plus 1, x minus 1. In my numerator, I distribute because I'm multiplying times that binomial. I'm taking 3 times that whole x plus 1. I get 3x plus 3. Now, don't forget we're subtracting, so that subtraction goes to both things here. It's like a minus 1 times x, and a minus 1 times minus 1 gets me a plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and simplify my numerator by combining like terms. I'm going to have 2x plus 4. My x's go together, my number parts go together, and that stays over my common denominator. I can simplify my numerator here by factoring out a common 2. I'm left with x plus 4. 2 over my least common denominator. Again, don't forget about restrictions on your domain. Uh, we have x cannot equal 1, and x cannot equal negative 1. We already have the negative 1, so I'm just going to add the 1 there in our restrictions. Now, we are dividing fractions here. In order to divide fractions, we keep our numerator. Okay, we don't change our first fraction at all, but we multiply by the reciprocal of our second fraction. So we switch from division to multiplication, and we take the reciprocal of our second fraction, which means that the denominator goes to the numerator, and the numerator goes to the denominator. When we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So now my entire numerator is this. My entire denominator is this. I've also introduced a new piece to my denominator, which means I need to check that for restrictions. x plus 2 cannot equal 0, because that would give me division by 0. So x cannot equal negative 2. So right now I have x cannot equal 0, negative 2, 1 or negative 1. Okay, uh, I can simplify here because anything divided by itself is just 1. Anything divided by itself is just 1. This is going to give me x minus 1 times x minus 1 over 2x uh, I can rewrite my numerator there as x minus 1 squared, since it's times itself over 2x if I want to. So there's my final answer, as long as x is not one of those four numbers.
these look like kind of long problems guys and they are a little bit uh, but the more you do these and the more comfortable you get with them the less of these steps you're going to necessarily have to write out um, these complex fractions ones though are going to take a little bit the fractions and the fractions simplify the numerator then the denominator and then divide them real quick recap here much of what's true about operating with fractions can be used to uh, in operations with rational expressions. Rational expressions can be added or subtracted by first finding a common denominator, preferably the least common multiple of the denominators. If not, we can still uh, get to where we need to go. We're just going to have to factor out more things, and it makes it just a little bit longer process. The LCM of denominators is the product of their prime factors, each raised to the greatest power that occurs in any of the expressions. And there is the assignment.